Now, um, moving on swiftly to what's happening uh, in uh, one of uh, the countries near to us, that is Sudan. Uh, we do have the political unrest and ousting of Al Bashel, and now you do have two strong <coughs> leaders that mm. came to in unity uh, to transition this country to better politics. Today, mm. uh, the story is uh, looking different. The two sides are fighting against each other. Mm. We did have uh, an interview with an international security expert with uh, Nkumba University. Uh, <coughs> that is Ivan K. Wadunyoro. Uh, he will be speaking to us on the matter. But I want to start with you, Mr. Musan, who's familiar with the East African affairs. In terms of security, what does this speak for the region? Because you do have the conflict that's going on in Democratic Republic of Congo that has sucked in Rwanda mm, yeah. for bad re mm. relations. Uh, then you do have and Uganda. this very same conflict sucking in security interests from yeah. the East African region. Mm. And then you do have uh, Sudan on the other side that's mm. uh, picking up sort of the same fire going yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I see it uh, as uh, very sad for the people of uh, Sudan. Uh, looking at the historical perspective uh, in, in, in Sudan, the two generals are disagreeing on uh, a serious principle on how they, they want to transit uh, uh, power from the military to the, the civilian population. Mm -hmm. And given that also even when they uh, got this power, it was from a coup. So we, 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 the South Sudan is looking at a situation, how <coughs> can they help uh, uh, Sudan, uh, Uganda, uh, the president has come out very clearly saying that please cease fire, we, we need peace, <coughs> and uh, in his wisdom we are saying that uh, Sudan needs to have real peace. Now we are looking at uh, 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 people dying, 100 plus people dying, almost 2,000 people injured. We don't know what is happening. It, it is actually creating a, a, a bigger, a bigger problem, not only for uh, um, Eastern Africa, mm -hmm. but also for the entire African continent. And we are discussing about these undemocratic uh, uh, situations of, of, of removing power but also limiting uh, the common person, the civilian population, into participating in their own leadership. The disagreements are actually within internal. Mm -hmm. They are not external. We, we, we are looking at, uh, at, at countries. How can they democratically manage the affairs of their own, uh, their own country without di discussing their sovereignty? Okay. Because as Sudan, they have their own they have their own power to manage their own processes, but we, they, we, they needed to, to talk peace. Okay. Um, uh, one of the ways they're managing this conflict within the country is curtailing the media uh, not to really show what's happening in the country. Uh, that causes a lot of pressure on the international community, but even the regional community, mm -hmm. being unaware of exactly what's going <coughs> on in ground. What does that speak into what's happening, and how do you interpret it? Uh, of course, suffocation of, of the press is, is always a very, very wrong thing in every, every situation because people must be alive mm -hmm. to what is happening everywhere. And it is something people have, dictators have chosen to remain with, but it no longer works. The news will always get out there. As of this morning, the numbers are expected to be about 100, yeah, 100 people 20. dead, 120. Yeah. So these numbers are still out there in the media. You can't fight the media anymore. But if you look at the depth of what is happening in Sudan, uh, General Hemeti was a member of the Darfur rebel communities. And then this other general, his name is difficult for me, to pronounce, uh, mm. but for him he has Bruhan. been, he has been Bruhan, on the side, yeah. Bruhan, he has been on the side of government, mm. the establishment of government. And these two people at one time have been fighting against each other, given the historical background of even what happened, the FFF and the RSF. Mm. Mm. Now, the resignation of the Prime Minister, or the coup of October, affected the relations of the two, because in the Prime Minister's leadership, Hemeti felt comfortable. 
Bruhan felt disturbed. That's why one, uh, one of them appreciates the going of the other and another appreciates uh, that one would have stayed. Mm -hmm. And that is where the confusion started from of who wields and yields power that will take them to the transition for civilian rule. The military is still, uh, I think, in, 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 in desire to still be in charge of the affairs exactly. of Sudan. Mm. And that is where the challenges are coming from. And the cost because of the even the civilian communities yeah. that led the uprising, mm. because this uprising was not led by the military. It was led by, civilian. after creation of the what they called the civilian community cells. And these cells mm. are still available. That is why they are always rising up when the pact reached upon is not to in tandem with mm. their aspirations of the revolution of 2019 okay. that uh, affected the overstay of, of Geno, Geno, Geno uh, Bashir being ousted out of power. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the, greater, the, the only thing that will happen to save the day is by the military appreciating that they must organize Sudan for civilian democracy okay because you will not have a stable sudan until the transition to civilian rule has happened because the revolution was started by civilians these That's, military heads yeah. are of course they're running the wealth yeah. that is why uh, sudan is a very wealthy country mm. and if you talk about dafo you know what is there mm -hmm. so the challenge and the tribalism the ethnicism, the, 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 the tribalism that has been in Sudan for a very long time mm. has also affected them. Let's hear from the international securities expert uh, with Nkumba University this morning. Ivan Kewarenjoro is having a dialogue with him on the same matter, uh, the state of security in Sudan, the translation of it within the region. Good morning to you, Ivan. Well, thank you very much, Chris and Priscilla. I am coming to you from Nkumba University here in Katavi Town Council, Waxo District. On a morning, of course, when the conversation uh, from Sudan, what is happening there, is still on everyone's mouth. And as we speak, many of people have lost their lives. Others displaced. Let me say they are now refugees in the neighboring countries, but also that those that are trapped in some of the areas where this conflict is uh, happening. We know very well that uh, the regular army against the paramilitary is still ongoing and as we speak many continue to test the rough of this conflict but we want to understand what can this have as uh, an implication on the neighboring countries but also Africa as a whole. We want to understand this from a security perspective international relations as well and i am joined by the peace and security with international relations expert professor solomon asimwe of nkumba university and thank you so much for joining me on morning at ntv thank you for having me ntv yes. yes we know you have closely been following what is happening in sudan what implication can it have on the neighboring countries that uganda is part yeah thank you uh Ivan, thank you very much uh, for that good question. Uh, well, uh, you know, as neighbors, <coughs> would uh, <coughs> would require to have uh, stability for easy trade, for movement, uh, for real activities to go on. If your neighbor is having a problem, then you're also not at peace. So Sudan is our neighbor. Uh, Sudan is our neighbor of this African region. If there is a problem there, our East African community is affected. Um, as we talk, many have been displaced in the neighborhood, but also some trapped in the areas that are facing or directly are involved into these uh, conflicts, and among them are Ugandans. Are we seeing this now having an effect on Uganda, and a dire, if we can say? It will have an effect on Uganda, as we have said, being neighbors. But before I, I answer that one, you need to know if there is a problem in Sudan right now. Of course, Sudan has been a conflicting situation since the overthrow of Bashir. Now, that current problem is likely to again raise another problem of the full. The, the paramilitary force which is fighting now, I, I know it may be defeated later on by the army of the government now, the Sudanese army. But if they are defeated, they are likely to withdraw and go back to Darfur. 
Okay, that's where they came from. That's the original Janja weed. I don't know that you have heard about Janja weed. And it was created by Bashir to fight the war in Darfur. Now, they are like it with draw and go back uh, because that's another place they have. So we shall have another civil war going on to continue. There was sort of peace. So IGAD must prepare for another problem in Darfur. Now, when Sudan has a problem, South Sudan, a neighbor of Sudan, will have a problem. And then if South Sudan has a problem, Uganda we shall have a problem, okay? We have refugees who will come from South Sudan to come this way. Although we may not have refugees from Sudan to Uganda, but if uh, Khartoum is not at peace, then uh, South Sudan, our neighbor, and uh, the country we are working so closely will have issues. So uh, I think uh, as a region, we don't want to have such a conflict. And uh, I don't know, uh, I think all regional groups, I'm, I'm told East African member, East African committee, we got the order moving in there, and that's the right way to do. Uh, we have seen the shadow uh, foreign affairs minister, the opposition, that's Kunyingi, urging government to take immediate interventions to rescue Ugandans that are trapped in these conflict areas. Does that show a sign of delay by government to intervene in this? Well, uh, we, I may not be privy on the programs of the government, uh, but uh, Nkunyingi is the opposition minister, yes, he's doing his right thing to remind the government, to carry out oversight on government, and uh, I'm very sure government may be concerned. The government has an embassy in Sudan. I'm sure the embassy must be doing some work. So uh, what he, uh, Nkunyingi, Honorable Nkunyingi is doing is uh, reminding the government to continue doing what they're supposed to do. And he says that even the civil aviation, the Ugandan government. Okay, all right. Those are the views and thoughts of the international secu securities expert at Nkumba University. He has made mention of the African Union. And uh, let me turn to the Pan-African Parliament legislator here, Mr. Musana. Uh, in regards to the Pan-African Parliament and the link between the African Union and what's happening on the African continent, focusing on Sudan this morning, what exactly is the African Union expected to do to help Sudan at such a time as this? Um... It is the role of uh, African Union to see that its member states exercise standard uh, democratic procedures. And in, as a Pan-African Parliament, because it is an arm of uh, AU, uh, the president of, uh, of Pan-African Parliament has already written his opinion on uh, uh, seizing fire and also encouraging the, the two sides that are causing uh, uh, discomfort in Sudan to make sure that uh, they, they, they rest, they, they, they put their guns down. So we, we, are, we are seeing that the head of African Union uh, coming into force to uh, interact with the, uh, the, 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 the two sides. Um, uh, Kenya and the South Sudan has offered uh, themselves in uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, brains together and see how can uh, how can they resolve this? How can they make the civilian population take the affairs of uh, Sudan? Uh, and uh, remember, we in the next th two two weeks, African uh, uh, Pan African Parliament is sitting, and it is going to be top on our agenda and to manage, to discuss, to recommend, and say South Sudan, uh, sorry, Sudan. Sudan, Sudan, how do we uh, uh, create peace? Uh, just like we have discussed this in, in, in DRC, the same, uh, we, we are greatly affected by even Uganda, okay. the business community, our Ugandans are stranded there, we wouldn't want to have this kind of uh, of discomfort on the African con continent okay. and we want to create <coughs> peace on the entire African continent and that is the core objective of uh, uh, African Union. Thank you so much Mr. Masana. Uh, Mr. Waiso, with what's happening for your party, you can't negate the fact that you must also draw lessons from what's happening elsewhere. What lessons do you feel Uganda can draw from such scenarios and uh, 
maybe create an environment where we can escape uh, the civil wars in the near future? Uh, we are on a time bomb as a country, and we quickly must look at the, what is happening to our neighbors in Sudan, because they reached here as a result of overstay in power. Bashir overstayed in power. You know, transitional justice is not achieved like beards grow. Mm -hmm. You know, you sleep, tomorrow <laughs> you have beards have grown. You only need to cut them. It must be given. So it is up to uh, the regime now to understand that to avoid the future of this country being in turmoil like they have seen Sudan, mm. whether they are dead or alive, Uganda must be prepared for a transition. Because power corrupts and corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Once it is in the hands of one person, it becomes the norm, the modus operandi. And once it escapes that person, so be it, whether it is a coup, whether he's defeated in an, a free and fair election, the continuity of a country is affected because people are used to the old adage of doing work as a result of a longevity of a person. And that is what we are curing in our constitution. Okay. Because Bashir overstayed there. He created uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of, 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 of uh, Anarchy, mm -hmm. when he was still in, in power. Mm -hmm. Therefore, anarchy will prevail for a certain time until when sanity resumes. Okay. Overstaying in power is a very serious challenge in Africa, and these are matters you must not run away. The African Union and the Pan-African movement should stop being an old club of dictators. Okay. It should be an a, a back, not a backing institution, but a biting institution. Mm -hmm. Because so once it ha so. is empowered mm -hmm. against these despots, like Genome 7, then Africa can set off to be better than it is today. All right. It's been quite an insightful morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Waisong Fumbiro. Alex, Deputy Spokesperson for the National Unity Platform. And of course, we've also been having Mr. Musana Eric, Member of Parliament, Pan African Parliament, who have committed that in the next two weeks they will be having a uh, dialogue and discussions on top of the agenda will be the unrest in Sudan recommendations and the way forward in line with the African Union now we also do have Stephen Bide on ground we want to know and hear from the business community uh, what fears do they have uh, mm. concerning the political unrest in Sudan uh, Stephen Bide is on ground speaking to the Casita fraternity good morning to you Stephen Mr. Sajinto is the spokesperson of Kampala, Capitals, Kampala City Traders Association, Uganda. And of course, we know the business community, whenever there is any uncertainty and unrest in the environment, in our neighbors, the business community is always the first to feel the pinch, like we saw in Kenya. Let me understand from you, Mr. Issa Sajito. Yeah. Uh, have you already begun feeling the pinch from the unrest in Sudan? Uh, definitely. When you talk about Sudan of the north, you are talking about South Sudan too. Because many items that go to the northern Sudan go through South Sudan. And therefore, it is directly linked to Uganda through that avenue. Lots of goods, including foodstuffs, uh, including essential items like... Uh, uh, medicine and other items that go to Juba find their way into northern Sudan. Uh, two, Uganda has many scholarships in the universities in uh, uh, Sudan and therefore the number of people involved, especially the students, is high in the, uh, the, the, the universities in, in South Sudan, I mean in northern Sudan. So it is directly felt the day something happens. Above all, because of light connections, we understand there are people who are met on the way. They were on transit to Mecca because of Umrah in this month of the Ramadan, and they were all caught at the airport. They cannot take it. They cannot go to the embassy. They cannot even get whatever they want. So that one definitely suggests that we are already worried. These are all people of the business community, especially the travelers who were on board uh, certain aircraft and were 
found grounded at the airport in Khartoum. So this is news that uh, is catching earth with the mixed fortunes and uh, it, it, there is no, no reason why we shouldn't worry because uh, the, the kind of war that they are talking about is very unique. Uh, if it is a war between the president and vice president, it can easily slide into genocide. Somebody looks at you, you are a threat, you have, and therefore you need to, 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 to die if that person is to politically survive, ministers, uh, other political people. So this is something that is so scary and we are worried. But for now, uh, do you have uh, traders who are coming from either Uganda or Sudan who directly trade into Sudan? Or you have only those who try tr trade with South Sudan and then the rest of the chain continues? Every plane you see in the world, if there is anything you see happening, whether to the Far East, whether in Africa, whether in Europe, there must be a Ugandan trading. Ugandans are very aggressive. There is no way you can think that there are no direct traders that go through whichever avenue to reach the points of Khartoum or any city in, in Sudan. So it, it is yet to be known in volumes but the fact is there must be people trading with the Sudan directly. Is there any limitation of Ugandans who are very many in Juba then having very direct trade links with the Khartoum? It is not news and it cannot be impossible because of the aggressiveness of the Ugandan traders. As we wind up, what is your call as traders because you're already uh, suffering uh, because of this unrest? We are already demanding lots of monies. I'm part of the team that have been claiming money in Kenya. Over 100 million US dollars is awarded now by the High Court and Supreme Court of Appeal in Kenya since 2089 has been paid. We are demanding lots of money in Juba because of the violence that happened there. We don't want to add more losses in northern Sudan. So it is our appeal to the regional uh, arrangements, both COMESA, uh, both um, IGAD, East African community. The leaders must come out. We have senior leadership in the region in the name of the President Yori Museveni. He's a senior person, has lived for long. I think his experience is very vital now that we can manage this situation before it goes out of hand. Thank you so much, Isa Sechito, the spokesperson of Kampala City Traders Association, Uganda. And this is, uh, what we've heard it from him, Priscilla. Of course, we know that now this is really serious for Ugandan community as well as the East African community. Well, thank you so much, Stephen Bede. And uh, we can only hope for the better in the coming days because uh, this um, civil unrest is within the third day of uh, its existence. Uh, so we're hoping that something can change within the near future. Anyway, as we close up morning at NTV, of course, we do have some birthdays in the house. On the 18th of April, 2022, the birth of Ronald Sebakabira uh, came forth. That young, handsome man um, is the one that we celebrate this morning and the message is run to win in all you do may the lord bless you cover you with his spirit and may he cover you with favor in all that you do seva kabira wishes are coming in from your family and your friends happy birthday to you ronald well on behalf of chris Igeni and myself priscilla regina naloga thank you so much for having been a part of this morning's show until we meet again tomorrow 6 30 have yourselves a blessed day goodbye